Martinez. We welcome back our co-host. He is the Admiral. Bill's Doublefield, two-star. Good morning again, Rob. Great to be here. Maria Lawrence, and former editor of the journal. And once you've got that news bug, it never leaves you. All-star. <laughs> Good morning. Good to be here. Great to have you along for the ride. Full hour to go here on the program. And uh, every morning I do uh, Today in History. Whatever happened on this date, we don't hit every single thing because that would take the entire morning. But we highlight some of the bigger things that have taken place. And then uh, that's followed by... Celebrity birthdays on this date and those who've passed away. So, uh, fortunately, my name's never on the list of those who've passed away. That's a good thing. But the other day, July 30th, I'm going down the list and it gets to 1984 and it says Kevin Pitsnoggle. Like, dude made it. He made the Wikipedia list of famous birthdays. Uh, probably wasn't one he was looking forward to because it's the 40. <laughs> right. If you remember the, the 40 year old birthday here uh, in this segment, we welcome in Dr. Ryan Sachs, superintendent of schools in Berkeley County. Doc, good to see you. Good morning. It's great to be here. And the 40 year old Kevin Pitsnoggle. <laughs> Happy birthday, Kev. Thank you. Good morning. I should say principal Kevin Pitsnoggle now, too. You've gone from assistant to uh, to principal. You have your own school now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, both of you come a little closer to your microphones there. I know you guys are, are taller than the average bear. Uh, but uh, just so we can pick you up nice on the mic, just lean into those a little bit there, too. Uh, Dr. Sachs, second month on the job now. How's it going for you? Oh, things are going uh, just just great. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been able to meet some uh, fantastic uh, folks in the community and, of course, uh, educators and service personnel. been able to work with uh, some of our school leaders uh, across the district and, of course, our district staff um, in trying to prepare for what I think is going to be an exceptional school year. Uh, Kevin, congratulations on the North Middle uh, a job that you have there. How are things going there? Thank you. Everything's going well. Um, I started about two weeks ago, and we've had opportunities to to meet with uh, the other assistant principals and some some state uh, representatives as well as some district rep- representatives, and it's been going well. What's first day of school this year? Uh, it's August 19th. August 19th. So that's um, about a week and a half away, I guess, or so, right? Uh, what will be the difference at North Middle as we open up the Kevin Pitsnoggle era there as principal with everything that happened to close down the last school year. Kevin, what will parents and students notice, if anything? Um, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> uh, the biggest thing is this going to be we're going to come in, um, try to be transparent with parents and so they can see what's going on, um, communicate with them, and, and just hold expectations, hold expectations for teachers as well as students, um, and just be consistent with those expectations. I know that uh, many have told me you were known for discipline in your previous stops, and obviously North Middle was a place where there needed to be a little bit more discipline there, so to speak. What do you bring to the table regarding that end of it? Yeah, I mean, my my uh, past jobs, I've been the discipline principals at, at uh, the schools I've been at, and I, I've really enjoyed it. Um, it's, it's actually... Uh, it's actually something that people don't realize. It's a great opportunity to build relationships. Um, I've had a, I've had the opportunity at Musselman to to build some really strong relationships with students um, just through disciplining and, and being able to communicate with them and communicate with parents. And um, I feel like at North, it's it's a great opportunity to have our APs and myself um, really build relationships with those students and build relationships with parents and the community um, through discipline. Um, and holding them accountable um, because I feel like no different than kids at home. We need to hold kids accountable, um, but at the same time, try to try to solve some problems. And Dr. Sachs, how much support and oversight can you give to Principal Pitsnoggle at North Middle, accounting for the fact of the state's involvement? Well, I think that uh, you know the first the first part is is that um, the school district um, you know helps. Mr. Pitsnoggle and his team set the expectation uh, for what should be accomplished each and every single day in the school. Um, that's a culture of high expectations, a culture of learning. Um, when we have high quality instruction that is engaging, um, discipline will improve and, and take care of itself, quite frankly. Uh, making sure we have an administrative team that is providing follow through with um, accountability of, of uh, student expectations. Um, learning expectations in, in the in the school as well um, so being able to provide that support for them so that when the hard decisions have to be made that we can support that work but also when as they continue to identify barriers or speed bumps that we can be there to triage or to be able to provide support whether that be um, personnel support 
or financial support in, um, in uh, programming, um, we're going to be there ready to assist Mr. Pitsnog and his team um, to make sure that there is uh, success every single day for our students. We have a moral imperative to make sure that that occurs. And um, I can tell you that uh, already Mr. Pitsnoggle and his team working together, working with some of our state, uh, our, our state uh, resources to be able to get some things into place that will establish those learning expectations, those expectations of students, um, and uh, that, that change in culture, um, we're already headed in the right direction. How much did your background and discipline weigh in you ultimately landing the job as principal at North Middle, Kevin or Dr. Sachs? Well, I, I think we had some. Um, we, we had a, we had a uh, good uh, uh, applicant pool, um, but you know, Mr. Pitsnoggle, his experience with discipline, um, his. Uh, uh, coaching mentality of being able to coach people his build relationships presence. <laughs> you know uh, those are things that um that i think catapulted him to being a, a leader that's going to be successful at north middle school um and and i'll be honest with you you know um his his experiences in ap not handling just discipline but also some of the um academic improvements um that we were seeing at the high school level also um with graduation rate and those sort of things are are all things that um, attribute to him um, having a foundation of, of success at North Middle School. Kev? Yeah, I mean, I can't really speak on um, the, the reasons I was hired just because I, I, I don't really know offhand. Um, I, I know what I bring to the table. I know that I, I have the ability um, to build relationships with students. I have the ability to hopefully build up teachers as opposed to tear them down. Um, and then and in the same sense, um, like like Dr. Sachs said, that the coaching mentality of uh, we work as one. Um, I, I'm not above anybody. Um, if, if it won't be successful if the if the team isn't working towards the same goal, um, and that's my goal at, at North is to bring everybody to the same table and, and get the same goals and have the same expectations so that we can be successful. Bill, yeah, uh, there's so much that goes into ability to make an impact, uh, inter inter integrity, character, the whole bit. But Maria kind of alluded to a second ago, uh, the physical presence, the fact that you're so tall, when you walk into a room, by definition, you control the room. I would think that would play a fairly instrumental role, and maybe not down the line, but the first few days of reception of meeting a parent, meeting a kid. Uh, have you experienced this, that your size actually is to your advantage? I mean, yeah, I, I think the size um, somewhat, uh, I think you'd be surprised with students uh, how much they don't care how big you are. <laughs> um, so, but, but as far as with parents and stuff, I think it's less size and more about the fact that um, people know who, know who I am. Yeah. Um, they, they've watched me uh, throughout my life. Um, they, they've seen articles, they've seen this. So they have a, an expectation of who I am already. So having the conversations, it kind of knocks down some walls a little earlier than what it would maybe with somebody that you don't know. Um, so I think that that general relationship is easier to build having that. Sure. Maria. I was going to say, it feels like everybody knows you, right? Yes. I mean, no matter where you go or who you see, or I'm sure in the grocery store or wherever you are, um, people say, oh my gosh, look, yeah. sort of a little point. So let me ask um, the both of you, how does it work in terms of the state's um, oversight or involvement with i mean are they physically present at the school do you like report in every other day or how, how does that all work really the relationship with the state is one of a supportive nature okay. now with with accountability it's sort of like you know you um inspect what you expect um so the the state has clearly identified that there were issues at north that needed to be addressed and they said you shall address these, and so we're going to help support you in the development of a plan to address these uh, areas of concern, which they've done, and it's, it's gone very well. And that's really part of the plan that Mr. Pitsnog and his team have uh, sort of finalized to lay out, to present to teachers and to students and to families. And then as we go through the implementation of that plan, they are collaborating with us to make sure that, again, we as a district, the school have the resources necessary for them to see success 
and if there are barriers, then we have that working relationship with the state say, hey, this is not working. We probably need to shift here a little bit. Um, and then, of course, you know, because the state board is uh, concerned that um, every school's, you know, performing well, you know, and they, they want to have, they have a vested interest to make sure North is, is on the road to success as well. There'll be annual uh, or, or uh, frequent updates to the state board as to the progress that we're making. So I would say that the relationship with the state is one of support, uh, one of collaboration, and uh, we have a, a liaison from the state um, who is fabulous to work with, so supportive. She's coming in and she's helping coach not just the administrative team a little bit around some best practices, but also will be there to work with the school staff when staff return on some best practices um, to make sure that that, and it's really professional development. It's professional learning exactly. that's truly embedded and it's not a well, we're going to take you out of the classroom and, 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 or, or take you out of the school for a day and have a sit and get and then go forth. Uh, it's me, one of embedded wraparound support. Let me follow up on that a little bit. Uh, Maria laid the foundation. Uh, the state board gave some expectations and gave some recommendations. Mm -hmm. did, it, was that the limit or did they get involved in such things as the selection of Mr. Pitsnoggle as a uh, as a principal? Did they how what's the level they of involvement did they have after they gave the recommendations? Um, no, they they uh, uh, the discretion of of hiring teachers, principals, assistant principals, um, um, academic coaches, whatever that may be. Um, they have confidence in the school district to be able to make those decisions without oversight mm -hmm. from the state board. Okay. Their, their responsibility in this is, is that, that they monitor um, and they receive feedback from us as to how things are going so that um, at the end of the year, there's no, ex there's no surprises. You know, if, if we haven't been able to meet a metric that we were hoping to achieve for whatever reason, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that we, we didn't get there because we were we well established some of the things that um, that um, needed to be addressed. Now the word surprise that was one of the words we comments we heard a great deal from members of the of our local board of education. They were surprised with the circumstances that created the state board of, of education becoming involved. Mm -hmm. What steps have been taken so that no one will be surprised downstream? Communicate, communicate, communicate. You know, um, you know, no one here is on an island, and um, so making sure that if there is an issue or or you know or, or, or the successes that we're seeing, we have to be able to communicate that. So communicating that with our our local board, who is fabulous. I mean, really is so engaged. Uh, making sure that they're well informed. Making sure that the, the community is well informed through, um, you know. We're going to have uh, um, instructional updates at our board meetings, and occasionally there'll be a, an update on the progress at North Middle. Um, Mr. Pitsnoggle will be able to come and report to the board as to what's working well and where they still are, are focusing some of their efforts. Um, and you know, this is this is also something that's important. It's a continuous process, and we're not going to see. Um, we're, we're just not going to be able to see everything that we hope to come to fruition overnight. Um, it's going to take time. It's going to take um, relationship building. It's going to, and that relationship building is not just with our families. It's with the, it's making sure the board's well informed. The state board is well informed. You know, uh, even today, you know, I know that the the state board will uh, uh, probably have some form of an update from our liaison um, as to getting the year started. Um, and so it's making sure that our board is well informed of some of those uh, those factors that are going to be communicated. Um, so again, it's about communication, communication, communication. Let me, and I'd like to follow up one more time. Communication is an easy word to throw out, and we all have the best of intentions. Frequently, though, we find excuses. Any organization finds mm -hmm. excuses not to communicate, uh, at least on on the appropriate levels. Have you put something in place oh. that will ensure the discipline that there will be? appropriate communication so you're really so if i understand correctly you're saying what is the strategy to communicate Ex yeah, well yeah. to ensure that we do not become relaxed in communication yeah so again uh regular board updates at board meetings um we also uh each week 
uh, I have a board update that comes from my office that updates the board on things going on throughout the school district each each week. Because it's not just isolated north. It's on any school in Berkeley County. Um, you know, uh, so we're updating them in, through that through that manner. Um, and then, of course, when we have our student assessment benchmarks um, at the beginning of the year, at the middle of the year, um, when the state does release test results and they're, they're no longer embargoed, is having immediate um, uh, updates the board as to here's what the here's what the results say and oh by the way our strategic plan has already identified what we're going to do to address these issues so it's not just communicating oh here's where we're struggling it's what are we doing what are we doing differently to make sure we're addressing those areas of concern um, so that when people do have questions as to well why you know why are we performing here or why is you know, uh, attendance in this area. Well, this is this is why this is our root cause that we've identified our root causes. But here's what we're doing to try to address it. So talk a little bit about either one of you a little bit about staffing. How many new teachers? Is there a lot of turnover? Obviously, you know, with the problems identified at North, um, you know, is it going to be a brand new staff you're going to be working with, Kevin? Um, a mix of people? Um, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so I, I can let you know that we, we have a full staff. Um, I think we're still looking for two special educators um, to finish it out. Um, but overall, I think we had to fill, I want to say about 12 positions. Um, and it, it's going well. Um, they're all really good people coming in, um, knowledgeable, um, good instructional people that we can hopefully build upon. Um, they're actually at the building right now um, going over some things with some of our staff kind of getting to know the building um, but we still have a, a solid group of foundational people that have been there for a while um, some 20-year teachers that have a lot of a lot of structure a lot of instruction and as long as we can get everybody on the same page i feel like we can build off the foundation that's currently there and and the whole premise of middle school wherever you are <laughs> it's a tough group of students to be around any special insight to your um to your work with middle school students before yep um i mean i've i've i started my career at north middle um as a special education teacher as a bd teacher behavior disorders um and then i also have raised a couple of middle schoolers in my day um i have a couple currently that are in eighth grade um I so don't, i don't look forward to that <laughs> so <laughs> i've been through it dude. you're right <laughs> yeah so uh, middle school kids are tough um sixth grade they come in um they're still little kids um seventh grade they're going through all those changes and it's a lot for them and it's just kind of managing that in eighth grade they're already adults at that point they're trying to figure out life they've already got it done and figured out so um I understand kids pretty well, but I also realize that the biggest thing is, is is respecting kids and giving them the opportunity to have a voice and giving them some ownership within the school. And if we can do those things, I think we can have a success. Did you attend North or South, Kevin? I attended South. All right. Is that going to hurt your cred in the hallways of, uh, of North there? You're... Uh, I still went to Martinsburg, so it's all right. <laughs> it all works out the same you, there, right? You use the word ownership, which I find very interesting as a student. I think it's very appropriate, but I find it very interesting. Would you expand on what you mean by ownership as a student? Yeah, so so we're planning on kind of a, a starting a, what's called the Renaissance Program, um, which uh, we sent a couple of our teachers and assistant principals to their big uh, meeting in Orlando to kind of figure out that program. Uh, some of our other schools in the county, Musselman High School, which I was at, uh, is a big proponent of Renaissance. Spring um, they, Mills is as well. Yeah, Spring yeah. Mills. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at opening that door, which then is is means our students are kind of leading the school. We give them the ownership. And if I if I can Renaissance, give you the, what do you mean by Renaissance? I, that's the that's name, the of, the, name that's of the that's the name of the program. I know, but what does it mean? Well, it's just uh, well, it's what does it's, the program it, do? It's does. the branding of the program. So it's a it, it is a student leadership organization that um, is designed to build ownership in school culture so that the students are helping design what it is that the school is going to become and mean um, for students. So it's building that um, sort of uh, school-wide spirit, school-wide culture of learning, expectations. What is it? I'll give you an example. So yesterday I sat down with the Renaissance leadership team from Spring Mills High School who were, you know, it was about uh, 15 students that have been working together on 
developing the mantra for spring mills of what does it mean to be a cardinal and what are we going to do to make sure that students feel um, supported emotionally in the school, that they have um, resources to feel connected. So they're talking about making sure that every student belongs to a club or, or an activity. Um, and so they're, they were actually designing, in conjunction with the staff, a plan for the school to improve. And that's exactly what Mr. Pitsnoggle is trying to replicate. And when, so when we're talking about ownership of, you know, um, that, that, as a uh, North Middle School student, we believe that we should be engaged in class, you know, every, every, every single period for 45 minutes. That becomes an expectation that obviously the staff wants. But if you can get the students to say, we believe that too, then they're a part of the solution. They're part of the culture in the school, and they own those expectations. And that's really, I think, what, what we're trying to accomplish. Dr. Ryan Sachs, Principal Kevin Pitsnoggle at North Middle, our guests here on the program. The scores that have the uh, test, the, the level of or lack of level of, of achievement at North Middle that were revealed last year. Uh, the question that I have for either of you, and this may be too early to ask you, Dr. Sachs, I'm not sure how much you've had a chance to get through the information. Were the kids coming into the school already that far below the the uh, state uh, levels of achievement or did that drop off really happen once they got to north middle do either of you know the answer to that i, I can I, i've listen i've dug into this um and i think that there's a little bit of both i think that um the assessment um and by students wasn't completely you know um and that the students didn't take ownership in making sure that they do their very best on the test, first and foremost. So I don't know that it accurately depicted what students knew. Um, and I think that's, again, from culture and expectation. But I also think that, they're, uh, that they, they are coming in with somewhat of a deficit. And so that's why we have to be able to work with our feeder, school, uh, feeder schools in the North Middle to make sure that they, too, have the resources to provide the very best education possible for their students and that the professional development and um, the systems of support that we're providing for North exist pervasively into the feeder for North Middle School as well. Um, and so it's, it's not just a one issue type scenario. I think it was the, it's the, there's a multitude of factors that resulted in why the test performance at North Middle School was where it was. But ultimately, um, we can't make excuses for that. We can't make excuses for why the state's assessment scores were so low. Um, we have to say this is, this is, how they, th this is uh, where they are, and so here's what we're going to do to address it in the future. And uh, again, assessing, is it the quality of instruction? Is it the quality of the curriculum resources we have? Is it the expectations and the culture within the building? I think it's all of those things. I think it's all of those things that we have to work to improve. I have about a minute left here. Kevin, how's the morale of among the teachers at North Middle right now? Um, so far, for the ones I've had the opportunity to speak with, see, meet, um, I think things are, things are well. Um, I think teachers are excited. Um, we've, we just sent out our first week uh, schedule for teachers next week, and, I, and we've had some good responses. People are excited to get back in the building, kind of get everything rolling with the, in the right direction, and, and hopefully have some positive interactions. Very good. Hey, thanks to both of you for coming in. Very much appreciated. And Dr. Sachs, I know you'll be making uh, many regular appearances on the program throughout the course of the upcoming school year. And I look forward to it. Kevin, congratulations again on the job, and hope we can get you back here again, too. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful to have you. Like the beard, man. Thanks. Yeah. 